Hi, this is Mike Fauché, and in today's video, I'm going to walk through how I upgraded my hard drives in my Ugreen NAS. If you want to see how I replaced all my drives, as well as how it went, then watch the rest of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this video useful. To set the stage, I have multiple NAS units, and I've been using Unraid for my media needs for years now. However, my current device is too big and power hungry for what I need it to do. As I've been experimenting with the Ugreen 4800 Plus for quite a while, I became truly impressed with the power of the CPU when it came to transcoding, and found that Plex and Jellyfin to run really well even during real-time transcoding. The more I used it, the more impressed I became that a small 4-bay NAS could handle much of what I threw at it. As my huge Unraid server spends much of its time idling, the heat it was generating and the power that it was using became a concern. I wanted a more efficient way to archive data, store my media collection, and run Plex, Jellyfin, and a couple of Dockers while not generating a ton of heat or using a ton of power. Currently, I have over 20 terabytes of video data between my Blu-ray movies and my YouTube channel archives, and my Ugreen NAS currently has four 4 terabyte drives. As my needs far outweigh my storage, my goal was to replace the 4 terabyte drives with 12 terabyte drives, effectively giving me a total usable capacity of 32 terabytes, plus one drive of redundancy, which should take care of my current media needs. Before you attempt to replace your drives with larger ones, it's always a good idea to back up your data if you can. I understand that many of us do not have that much extra space in another device, so at a minimum, try and back up the critical data. This is just a precaution, and hopefully you don't ever need it, but you should do what you can to protect your data in the event that something goes wrong. It's extremely important to understand a few things before you start. First is the process will not work if you're not using RAID. You need to verify that the RAID configuration before you start, as these instructions only apply to RAID 5 and RAID 1 arrays. Secondly, you may want to change your RAID sync priorities to make this process a little bit faster, as it can take anywhere from 6 to 24 hours, depending on the amount of data, the speed of your drives, and the drive size. Lastly, these instructions need to be done one drive at a time, or you'll lose your entire array of data. You can't replace more than one drive at a time. In addition, you will not see any of the extra space as you replace the drives until you finish the entire process and have expanded the pool. The first step is to log into the web interface and go to the storage panel under hard drive. You should see all of your hard drives listed. Going to the first drive, click on the triple dots on the right and select disable for the first drive. You'll be prompted with a warning. Select disable and type the admin password and it will pull the drive out of the storage array. You should see storage degradation warning in your storage panel. Next, shut down your NAS by selecting your profile and selecting shutdown. This will shut down the device, but you'll still need to remove the power for 10 seconds and plug it back in to make sure that everything's been properly shut down and can be powered up again. Next, remove the first drive that was disabled. Typically, it should be the first drive bay and replace it with a new larger drive. Insert the drive back into the NAS and press the power button to power the device back on and wait till it's fully started. Go back to the storage application and under storage, select repair. Or using the triple dots on the right, click on the storage pool repair and the repair process will start. Make sure the proper drive shows up and hit apply. It'll prompt you that it will format that specific drive and ask you for a password, which will start the rebuild process. It's critical to prevent data loss that you allow this to completely finish the rebuild process before starting the next drive. Remember that it can take anywhere from 6 to 24 hours to complete each drive. Once it's done, repeat the same steps for each of the drives one at a time, waiting for each to complete before starting the next one. You'll need to do the same exact process as the first drive, and remember that you won't see any of the storage gains to the pool until we do the next step. As we go through the rest of the steps, I'd appreciate it if you could give this video a like if you find it useful. And for more videos like this, please don't forget to subscribe as it really does help support the channel. Once you finish that last drive, it's now time to expand the pool. Log back into the web interface and go to the storage application. Under storage, you'll see under the storage pool, 
you'll see an option to expand the pool to the full size. Click on Expand and it will begin the process of expanding the RAID pool to the full usable size of the array, which in my case is 32 terabytes. Again, this will take some time and could take as long as a drive replacement, which can be 6 to 20 hours. The last step is to expand the volume itself, which you can do before it's completed syncing of the storage pool as I did in this video. However, I would recommend waiting until each phase is done. You can create a new volume using the extra space, but I prefer a larger volume as it's a bit more efficient use of storage. To expand the volume, select the triple dots and click Expand. You'll be prompted for how much you want to expand it by, and it will show you the maximum amount of storage you can use. Assuming you want to utilize the remaining space of Volume 1, type the number that's listed in the maximum and hit Apply. Once you do that, sit back and relax for a while until it completes, which, as in previous stages, can be six hours or more. When you're done, it should look something like this. So what do I think of the process? I've done this with other manufacturers such as QNAP, and for the most part, the process is very similar. The only thing I found different with the Ugreen is that it was a little bit less automated and had a few extra steps than what I saw with the QNAP. The QNAP in Synology allowed me to just pull the drive and replace it, and it would just start rebuilding without any manual intervention. I didn't need to do anything else such as disabling the drive, powering down, or starting the repair. The actual rebuild process was the same amount of time, but it was just a bit more automatic. Given that you don't need to do this very often, it's not really a big deal, and overall the process worked flawlessly. I'm very happy with the extra space when everything was said and done, and it was relatively easy. I really didn't have any issues with the drive migration following these steps in this video, but as I mentioned before, I'd recommend backing up your data in case something goes wrong at any one of these steps as you could potentially lose the entire array. It's not likely, but certainly possible. Anyway, that's about it for today's video, so please don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.